How's it going? So for those of you who are curious, I have been asked this before. Uh, if I have made any cooling modifications to this particular inverter because I modify all of my power jack inverters for cooling. To be honest, with this, something that's this large, with this much space in between, you know, the transformer, the main boards, there's really not too much you can do. However, there is one thing, and it's actually risky in my opinion, but since I don't push this inverter to its absolute maximum all the time it's not something that I'm really too worried about but it does help cool the transformer so what I did was I basically just removed this bolt and top plate from the inverter now it's not just the bolt and the top plate you also have this pad here that's on top now these are not necessary for Torodio transformers. This is mainly for shipping and to keep the transformer secure. Obviously, if you're riding around with this thing, let's say that you've got a, a business and you, you run this inverter out of a van or a motorhome or something like that, you're not going to want to do this. But my particular inverter is stationary. It stays in one spot all the time. It does not move ever. It's on a very solid wooden foundation, so it's not going to tip. It's not going to rock. It's not going to move. So I'm not worried about this Torodio transformer moving around inside of the inverter. Again, it's great if you have uh, lots of movement, but for me, I just don't have that movement. So basically, in order to get that off, it's really easy. You have a, in this particular case, there's a 22 uh, millimeter uh, nut right here that sits on top. You've got a lock washer that's right underneath that. And then you have a regular washer that's underneath that. Now, I highly recommend that you disconnect your battery bank uh, from the inverter. The reason is because uh, the way the PowerJack designed this particular one, again, yours may vary a little bit because this is a pre-production unit, is the temperature sensor that's over here on uh, this side here. You can see where mine is actually missing. It's actually still there, but they're the the uh, the footing is still there. Uh, there are metallic ends that are on these wires that come out. And when you start unplugging that kind of stuff and it flops around in here, you've got 24 volts or 48 volts coming into the system. If you short out something by accident, I guarantee you, you're gonna end up ruining your inverter. So I highly recommend that you disconnect the battery bank before you do any of that stuff. All right, that's just crucial. And what you'll notice is that they actually have two temperature probes. There's one that sits on top of the transformer right here, and there's one right here. Now there is a third one that's over here on this side. Mine is actually not connected. It didn't come connected, and I don't believe there's actually a spot, at least on this design of the board, to actually connect it. So whatever yours might actually be connected but you end up with a couple of wires you end up with uh, two red wires and possibly two black wires and what you want to do is you want to get yourself some electrical tape and you want to tape off the ends of any metallic portions again on the bottom of this transformer or at least on the top underneath that pad is a metal temperature sensor or a thermistor and you want to make sure that that doesn't come in contact with anything else that may be here so the best thing to do is to just unplug your battery bank and then just feed the wires through there's a, uh, a distribution block over here on the right hand side and then you just disconnect the wires in fact I still have mine here I have not disconnected mine you can see they're right here um, so these wires I taped off and I just tucked them in underneath these fans I didn't completely remove them or disconnect them or anything I just tucked them in behind these fans but I used electrical tape on the ends of the connectors to make sure that if by chance they came into contact with any metallic component that's inside here it's not going to hurt them because they're going to be insulated so just keep that in mind you also want them away from the fans you, you obviously don't want them sticking out near the fans so uh, yeah now what that did by removing especially that rubber pad you see this this rubber pad here this holds in a lot of the heat, and it's a shock absorber, and I get it, and I understand. Um, it's a shock absorber, but it holds in an enormous amount of heat. 
And you guys know that I tested this uh, a couple days ago, all the way up to almost five kilowatts. And the transformer, while it does, you know, get a little bit warm, it has what are, you know, what I refer to as hot spots in the transformer. So this fan back here, or all the fans, when the lid is on, it's bringing air in across the transformer and then out the sides. Unfortunately, there are spots here that the fan just doesn't have the opportunity to really move the air because it all kind of depends on where the ventilation is. In this case, it's on the outside. You've got some ventilation on the hood on the outside, but there's nothing really in the middle. So some of this heat can actually get trapped here in this area, and then you get what are called hot spots on the transformer. Now, I'm not running my fans right now, and I'm, I've got a... Um, looks like about a two kilowatt load right now and the transformer is currently running at 32.98 c and looks like 31 31 so what this is doing 33 so what this did was it made the temperature of the transformer more consistent all the way across now i will note that you can see there's actually some copper that's sticking out i don't know if you can see that or not but there is some copper sticking out uh, behind here keep in mind that depending on which winding that is there's well over 100 volts or well over 200 volts coming out of this transformer here so don't touch don't stick your fingers in there touch anything when the inverter is running none of that stuff just it's better if, if you have the inverter on just have the lid on and don't touch anything in there but you know for example i'm just showing you this um so you don't know how much voltage is coming through those wires so just or that copper so just make sure that you're not touching anything down there but the transformer will have a much more consistent temperature and you won't get any hot spots you guys know that when i tested this last time that there were a couple spots here on the side of the transformer that were actually a lot warmer than another spot in the transformers you can see here it's fairly consistent between 31 and 33 for a temperature and that's what you want you know got, getting up to 34 here that's what you want again this is a two kilowatt load so it's not really that much of a load now the one downside about this is because you're disconnecting the thermistors there's no way for the inverter to know when it's overheating okay so if your inverter does start to overheat it's not going to shut down automatically. The fans aren't going to come out automatically. That is a risk. That's a risk you take with it. But I personally don't crank this thing all the way to its maximum and keep it there. So I'm not worried. I've never had a thermal shutdown before. So I'm not too concerned about that. And in my opinion, my honest opinion, these thermistors are kind of slow to report that the fan needs to come on. Uh, at least from my experience with other power jack inverters so if you have a heat spike that's about ready to blow all the mosfets out it's unlikely the inverter is going to catch it it's more likely the inverter will catch an overload as far as amperage than it will temperature although these do shut down quite often due to temperature i think false readings and so on um, but this inverter this particular inverter has never had an issue with uh, temperature you can see the temperature is coming down now you see how quickly that comes down with the fans it was at what 33 now that the fan is on it's bringing all that air out and it'll be even better when the lid is actually on because then it'll be able to push the air out right now it's just kind of just throwing the air everywhere but you can see already that the temperature is starting to come down you see that now we're down into the 20s we still have some spots that are in the 30s but the temperature of this particular transformer is actually coming down so number one i highly recommend that you run the fans no matter what load you have and if you do this modification make sure that you don't touch anything in here with the battery bank uh still connected if you see any green leds on here you see these green leds if you see any of those that are on then i recommend that you do not do anything until those leds are off so if you have any questions let me know take care